Well, good morning, friends. Welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thanks for joining me today. Grab a good cup of coffee and join me in the Gospels. Tell you what, we're going to look at a story from Mark chapter 6 that is actually in all four of the Gospels. But before we get there, I just want to say happy birthday in heaven, Mom. Yes, my mom, Virgia Chafin Bailey, would have been, had she still been alive, 105 years old today, born in 1919. So uh, October the 8th is her birthday, and I always remember what a blessing it was to have a godly mom that, along with a godly dad, raised me to love Jesus and point me in the right directions. Well, in light of that, I want to deal with a story that's most famous that I probably learned as a young child in Sunday school, and you did too. It was one of those great biblical stories that amazed all of us. It's the feeding of the 5,000. This begins a brand new chapter in our series on the man who divided time. This is a section we call the withdrawal from Galilee after the ministry in Galilee. And this is an amazing passage of scripture because, again, it's confirmed by all four of the gospel writers. But we're going to use Mark as the background for it today and then bring in some of the information from the others. Now, it's amazing that as we look at this particular story, that Jesus' first concern is after this tremendous ministry they've had in hearing about what's gone on with Herod and the death, the beheading of John the Baptist, that his concern is for his disciples to get some rest. My concern for you is the same this morning. Uh, we've all been kind of wide open, and especially some of my pastor friends, um, some of those that are working in disaster relief right now, it's a, it's a seven-day-a-week situation, it seems like, and you have to plan to get rest if you're going to still be able to function and get something done. It's not going to help those people you're working to assist if you burn out and are no good to anybody, especially your own family. So there are times that you have to come away and get rest, get some restoration so you're able to get back in the game and be the best you you can be to help others. Well, as we get to this particular passage, it seems like this is part of what's on Jesus' mind in uh, Mark chapter 6, verse 30, where it says, The apostles gathered around Jesus, reported to him all that they had done and taught, and he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a remote place and rest for a while. For many people were coming and going, and they did not even have time to eat. Yes, the ministry of Jesus is busy right now. And there's always something to do. There are always people to help. There are always lessons to teach. But you just can't go in that human body 24-7 without ultimately killing yourself. So verse 32 says, So they went away in the boat by themselves to a remote place. So they get uh, into the boat onto the Sea of Galilee to travel to a place where they know there's not a village. There are not any people. It's remote. It's a quiet kind of setting oh, where you can just kind of breathe, have something to eat, spend some time in prayer, get some rest, get some sleep. You know, it's true, and it's often been said, sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is take a nap. Well, that's what Jesus wanted for his disciples. But watch how this plan kind of gets turned on its head because of his reputation. And because of what's happened in the lives of people, friends telling friends, telling friends, telling other friends about Jesus, that the crowds have grown so large. So here's what happened. Verse 32 says, So they went away in the boat by themselves to a remote place, but many saw them leaving and recognized them, and they ran on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. So while the disciples are in the boat going to this remote place, the crowds are running around. The Sea of Galilee is just a gigantic lake. And so they said, hey, let's go. And they actually arrived ahead of them. Verse 34 says, when he went ashore, he saw a large crowd. And he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And then he began to teach them many things. 
Well, when it grew late, his disciples approached him and said, this place is deserted. It's already late. Send them away so they can go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. <laughs> In verse 37 is the wonderful message from Jesus. You give them, you give them something to eat, he responded. Uh, at that moment, the, the disciples must have been looking at each other and in astonishment, thinking, what in the world is this man saying? What do you mean? We, what, did we bring a grocery store with us? What? Where, where's the food truck, y'all? So it says also in verse 37, they said to him, should we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? And he asked them, well, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they found out, they said, five and two fish. Now, it's in John's gospel that we understand that these were brought there by a little boy who apparently had been maybe blessed by mom. <laughs> I'm thinking of this on, on mom's birthday. You know, a mom that's sending her little son away saying, I want to make sure you've got something to eat. And that's probably more than he needed something for maybe you and a friend as she packed his lunch for the day. So here's this kid showing up with five loaves and two fish. And then it says in verse 39, he instructed them, Jesus instructed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. And he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke the loaves and he kept giving them to his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them all, and everyone ate and was satisfied. They picked up 12 baskets full of pieces of bread and fish after everyone had eaten, of course, and now those who had eaten the loaves were 5,000 men. So the feeding of the 5,000 means there were 5,000 men, and as a couple of the other gospel writers indicate, plus women and children that were there. So the actual number fed may have been many, many more than that. If there were 5,000 men, there could have been 8, 10, 12,000 people. Who knows? But at least the base number they were able to count were 5,000 men. What are we to think of this? Well, we're to think that Jesus, once again, is demonstrating his power over nature and over circumstances. He is demonstrating how he can take the least that we may have and multiply it many, many times to meet the needs of people. These are lessons we need to learn, especially as right now we're uh, watching this multiplication of resources come into our own region as I serve in the area of North Carolina that has been uh, one of the hardest hit areas ever by a hurricane this far inland. And right now we're watching the people of God respond by bringing things in. Now this isn't the same as the miracle Jesus performed here, but I think it's quite reminiscent of seeing how God's people step up in a time of need and really make a difference. Well, in this case, Jesus is trying to teach us a valuable lesson. And it's not that people had, I've seen people try to explain this miracle away. Well, you know, folks really had food hidden under their cloaks and they started bringing it out. No, 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 Mark's very plain here. Matter of fact, all the gospel writers are very plain that Jesus blessed the food and then he starts distributing it and his hands continually have food in them, the loaves and the fishes, as more and more people need to be fed and it's coming from the Lord. That's how it's happening. And in the end, it's no accident that with 12 apostles, there are 12 basketfuls of remnants left over. So oh, friends, there's an important lesson being taught here. And John especially is going to talk about how Jesus used this lesson later to describe himself as the bread of life. Don't have time to cover that this morning, but... Just suffice it to say that Jesus was not just performing a miracle for the fun of it. He was, number one, taking care of people's needs to show what he wants us to be doing in ministry, but also he was teaching a valuable lesson about himself, and he would use this illustration 
to teach a, va a valuable point of Christian doctrine that we'll look at tomorrow. Well, thanks for being with me today. It's a great day to know the Lord and be with the Lord and to be praying not only for the folks that have survived Hurricane Helene and for those who've lost friends and loved ones, but to be in prayer for the people of Florida who are facing another massive storm that's going to be hitting tomorrow. So prayers for all of you in the path of Milton that, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, a, it's a tough time as these disasters continue to hit our nation. So keep those folks in prayer and then ask, Lord, how can I be your hands and feet during this time? See you again tomorrow right here when we wake up in God's Word.